Right, so it, so where, where, where has this pursuit taken you? Oh, my God. Where have you landed? Why would you ask that? I'm asking that here and now. It's New York City. It's okay. March 7th. Well, partly it's taken to these very strange images that are behind your head right now. <laughs> these are pictures of equations. I've been, for the last 15 years, trying to answer the kinds of questions that my colleagues here have been raising. And what I've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory. And it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix or not. <laughs> Wait, you're blowing my mind at this moment. So you're saying, are you saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers? That is correct. So the wait, wait, I'm still, wait. I have to just be silent for a minute here. So you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos? Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code? Computer code, strings of bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code, you're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code, it's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. That's what we find very, very deeply inside the equations that occur in string theory and in general in systems that we call, say are supersymmetric. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Time to go home, I think. I mean, I, where are we going to go? So, so are you saying we're all just, there's some entity that programmed the universe and we're just expressions of their code? Well, I didn't say that. I mean, some of those like the matrix? You, that's of, what you said. Some of those codes are, are showing on the screen behind you right now. They don't look like codes, but these pictures, which we call adinkras, are graphical representations of sets of equations that are based on codes. So this is, in fact, to answer your question more directly, I have in my life come to a very strange place because I never expected that the movie The Matrix might be an accurate representation of the place in which I live. Jim, may, 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 well, may I give have... you an argument that we don't live in The Matrix? A very, a yeah, very, please! Yeah. A very simple, <laughs> argue, a very simple give argument. Give me one now, quick. A very simple argument. There's a, there's a property that the real world right down here has that no mathematical equation has, that no solution of an equation has, that no, okay, that no abstract object has. Here in the real world, it is always some moment, which is one of a series of passing moments. And a mathematical equation doesn't have a flow of time in it. It just is. No, and this but, means... But Lee... Wait, wait, Lee, let him finish. Wait, 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 I need him <laughs> here and now. <laughs> this means, that, to me, that the, 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 the ancient metaphysical fantasy that we quote are just mathematics cannot be true because in a world that was just mathematics there would be no moment of time. Why isn't there is this, math as Lee, a function Lee, of time? I'm sorry. We solve those, just, these are differential equations. But, no, but Lee, then you lay the solution Lee, out. Lee, X is a, yeah. you're mistaking, you keep using the word is and I'm talking about the word describe. You see, the whole, describe is fine. But no, then, no, but no, but, but then let, me, let me finish, please, yeah. since we started with my discussion. The point <laughs> is that I, I, you know, it's fun to talk about some deep metaphysical essence that sits behind physics. But for some of us, it's about trying to find the most accurate way to describe where we live. And so my statement is that in the description of our universe, that is a supersymmetrical universe, which we were going to test in the LHC. If you believe that description, I can show you the presence of these codes. That's my statement.